Well, hey, unprofessionals. Welcome to episode 61, Toby Price. This episode is brought to you by Crayola. Crayola, color your books, color your papers, or leave them in your car so they can melt and color your carpet. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell somebody. It's just a click for you, but it really helps us a lot. We hope you enjoy this episode. Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast. Providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space, you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. I recently joined as a member, and you can too. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with the advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at p-o-d-g-o dot c-o. And please put unprofessional development in the how did you hear about Podgo? That will give us a little finder's fee. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another exciting episode of Unprofessional Development. I'm Tedesco. And I am Mealy. And today we have with us... Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know him from the joke of the day on the Twitter and wherever else you may know him from, because I'm sure if you're listening to this, he's shared it all over the social media and up and down the streets of um, Mississippi, um, you know, just screaming that um, he's been on our podcast. So you're, you're tuning in and now you're getting to hear him. So um, Toby, welcome. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are y'all doing today? We're doing great. I'm doing all about Tedisco. How are you doing, Tedisco? How am I doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. I could use yeah. another cup of coffee. Yeah. Okay. I'm, but that I'm pretty doing... much applies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, do you want me to sing um, Bob Dylan, One More Cup of Coffee for the Road for you? I, I can I can do a little rendition of that. Yes. One but do, more do, do the white stripe cover. Coffee covered. for the Road. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome, uh, Toby. How's Mississippi treating you? Uh, Mississippi has been treating me quite well this week. We have been snowed in, iced in for what it's worth, and um, we, we, we fare pretty well. Uh, you know, we kind of hold our breath here when anytime we get ice or any kind of yeah. stuff that the power goes out, this house, it ain't going to work. Yeah, mm. I understand that. I understand that. Mm. So as the boys and girls listening at home that have heard of the past couple episodes, we're trying to flip up or, or, or mix up how we um, have people tell their educational story rather than just reading off their resume chronologically or whatever so um i hope you're prepared we'll see how it goes and since you are toby Wan kenobi um you're going to tell us your teaching bio as a standalone star wars movie so um regale us you, you know um i thought about this a lot when when i when i was looking at those questions i thought about this a lot because i, I thought to myself you know I, i'd be a jedi i'd be a jedi or you know like um mm -hmm. i bet from community i'd want to be han solo you know yes um <laughs> But when I look at the last, let's say the last 10 years that I've been in administration, mm -hmm. it, it's a different story. Um, You've gone to the dark side. Are you Sith? I went to, I, exactly. I, I, I'm more like Finn. More like Finn. Um, okay. From, from, the, from the sequel trilogy. You know, I was a, tr a stormtrooper. I thought I could do it. Uh -huh. I, thought, um, I thought this is what I wanted. I can join the, I can join the Empire and I will be, this time it'll be different. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be shooting villagers in the face, but. You know, the, the longer I was an administrator in the, like the lead administrator in the building, the more I realized that, man, the empire, the, I was fighting for the wrong side. <laughs> wow. Um, every, everything that I was doing in education, it, it all had to do with the test scores. And it, it yes. started just to consume me. Mm -hmm. um, test scores, test scores, test scores. And, you know, the worst part was when I took over the building where I was, the longer I stayed, the better we started doing and the worse it got. I mean, it consumes you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> they offer you so many things, and the more you do, I mean, it just it'll consume you, and, and eventually, you know, I just quit and joined the rebellion, and <laughs> I'm nice. in 3K through second grade now. Um, I'm an assistant principal, love it. Yes, love awesome. it. Getting pieces of my life back, getting to see the rest of the galaxy, so to speak, each day. <laughs> Man, it, it, you know, it's just where I'm. It, it, I think. I can still make the same kind of impact, but it's, I'm happier. I got so much peace of mind and so much quality of life back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, now I, it, you know, as far as education goes, I was teaching I taught for a long time. Um, I taught first grade, fourth grade. Um, I taught fifth grade, all boys for five years. That was wow. a lot. 
it would tell everybody it's just like a regular classroom except that it just smells really it's bad smellier. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> really bad. yes really bad but i mean and the fart and, jokes get bigger laughs when it's all oh boys. my gosh yes i would just put the word <laughs> fart on powerpoint slides back in the day just because just to see if everybody's paying attention mm -hmm. uh, yep okay find the object of the preposition fart what's that for? <laughs> it's just because yes yeah. Because my stepson just yeah. lost some points on a poetry uh, project he turned in because that was the onomatopoeia of his choice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. He didn't like so, it, huh? He answered a whole page on fart. Yeah. That's that's, that's brilliant. Awesome. He used it's, it in context not... three times. I don't understand what the problem is. They made you proud, didn't he? <laughs> he that's made me something. Win. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> kind of back win. to what you were saying though with the with the with the empire thing. Mm. I Whenever I have conversations with fellow teachers and something has happened that administration has made a decision that we are upset about, that we don't like, I always go, just about every decision they make that I don't like is when I realize what fueled that decision was pleasing the people above them rather than the people below them. And it's like, this makes no sense. Oh, no, it makes sense because the super, it's going to make the superintendent happy. And he or she is trying to make the superintendent happy now because, you know, they have a boss. I know you think they, they should be doing everything to work for us, but they actually have a boss. And not that I'm like, you know, a lot of boxes to check. Right. Right. So it's like, oh, why are we doing this thing? Oh, because that's that's going to that's going to click. That's going to check that box. That's going to make the superintendent happy. Yeah. And, and what when it ended up happening to me, I don't know if you noticed this just from me being online on Twitter. Sometimes I mm -hmm. sometimes I say or do things that aren't completely typical yeah. and you know that's why you're on unprofessional development <laughs> exactly and and you know um and like every a large facet of my life was like you know pleasing the superintendent mm -hmm. I get a phone call saying you have a profile picture with a lightsaber you got to take that down it's like okay and, and after a while i gave <laughs> in started changing after a while it was not okay because i changed a lot too much mm -hmm. too much and you know, I'm just yeah. now getting back in my groove again to feel more like myself. You know, the two yeah. years I've been in pre-K through second grade, I love it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that's tough. So, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't always say the nicest things about admin, but, and, I, but I, and I try to weigh it. But, like, you do have to realize that sometimes they're literally going through and not liking who they are and what they have and what they have to do, you know? People, yeah, people don't realize. I, I didn't – well, let me say, I didn't realize how, um, I guess – lonely it is i don't want to say lonely because that's not really the word but you're by yourself isolating it is like there it is isolating is the word it's very isolating because if you're doing it and you're doing it right you're very isolated mm -hmm. to a point you know and, and yeah uh, it's mm -mm. and there's well, certain boundaries doing it you have, right right I say yeah and there are certain boundaries that you do have to keep because there's some there's some administrators who are trying to like work with teachers and they almost become too familiar and then they then then they different don't kind of to, toxicity yeah yeah and it, and it can be like oh well it's so and so so you know i don't you know i don't need to do that and, I don't, and it's like no no we you know mm -hmm. so you actually you know we as teachers sometimes have to you know i know that sometimes i have to go okay guys i know i'm funny i know i'm silly i know you guys think we're, we're, we're cool but no that that there I, I can't allow and so sometimes you have to be careful that you know just like mm -hmm. we do I with our students yeah, Go exactly. Ahead. And I've had to do that with, with grownups too. They're like, you know, Mr. Bryce, but these kids love you. And I was like, well, I've suspended more of them than any of you have. <laughs> I love to play and dance all day long. But you remember in parts of that movie, Willy Wonka pushed that kid into the um, chocolate river. <laughs> I mean, it had to be done. Sometimes it has to be done. Yeah. Kind of admin I want to be. <laughs> the kind with singing slaves. Yes. I don't really know what the relationship was with him and the Oompa Loompa. I mean, he saved I them, I guess. I don't know. Right yeah, so, yeah that, that's, that's, uh... before we, we go on to like the, the rest of you, I, I do have an interesting question for you then. OK, so if you could give either a piece of advice or a warning to teachers who are thinking of of making that jump to the dark side mm. of becoming admin, what, what would you say to them? <laughs> um, make sure that you you have a real strong sense of self and who you are, mm -hmm. because if you go into it without that you'll become something really quick. Yeah. And yeah. It, you may not like who it is. Mm -hmm. Wow. You may not like who it is. Yeah. You got to have a real yeah. strong sense of self and who you are before you go into it. Yeah. That's, That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love yeah. that. And scary. Okay. <laughs>
every now and then I trip up over something. Yes. Yeah. Yes, right. Yes. Be the Luke, not the Anakin. It's well, I mean, it's a little bit that little trip into the cave. There, um, um, action. You have you have to go take that trip into the cave before you actually leave. Um, Agaba, why can I say that right? Like, Dagoba. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay, but before you leave, you gotta you gotta go in the cave there and find out like what what you're really up, what you're really about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You gotta know. You might not be ready. You might think you're ready, but maybe you gotta you're know. Not ready. It's made me. It's made me a better assistant. I tell her, I get it. And mm-hmm. nine tenths of the time, I like. Oh, you need me to do that? Let me have that. Let me have that. Let me have that. <laughs> and then yeah. I still take. I still relish in the fact that. Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. I can't make that decision. You'll have to speak to the building principal. <laughs> <laughs> nice to pass that one on, isn't it? Every now and then. Every now and then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie. It's like yeah. the irate customer asking to speak with the manager, and you just think, "I'm so glad I'm not the manager." I'm not the manager. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now I can start, now nine times out of ten I feel I feel a lot of those but you know it it is it is it is not having that that little extra monkey on your back I guess that that you know I, I my my favorite part of the job was the kids and the longer I was in admin like as the head principal the longer I, I felt like I was more disconnected from the kids in the building. So as an assistant, how do you find that balance then between advocating for your teachers to mm-hmm. the principal versus carrying out your marching orders to the to the teachers i guess again it goes back to having that strong sense of self where you know who you are Mm -hmm. teachers know who you are because they know my job is to my job is to make the principal's job easier the principal's job is to take care of these teachers yeah so it's kind of it, it is a balancing act because if i'm doing my job i'm taking care of that principal so she can take care of you so you tell me what you need Mm-hmm. So, you know, she can get it for you or I can get it for you. It, it is a delicate balance. It's kind of the in-between. We're like in the middle of that little fulcrum there, spectrum, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I what is it? I, I tell him, tell him, you know, the principal, you know, I'll, I'll keep her informed of everything that goes on in the building each day. But it's the stuff that I don't tell you is that what makes your day go by easier. Yeah, there you go. Um, right. Yeah, you don't need to, she doesn't need to know every single time somebody, you know. I take care of the teachers for you. They need something. I'm going to get it for them. Right. Mm-hmm. right. I, I love having those those vice principals where I can walk into the room and say like, "Hey, hypothetically, <laughs> if this a were a situation that just happened last period, what should we do next?" <laughs> and like getting that honest advice. Yeah, and here's yeah. what happened, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've had those hypotheticals. Yeah, yeah, yes. hypothetically. Yes. My friend yeah. in another school teaching the same grade level, also named Tedisco, and <laughs> they got this email. <laughs> I go ahead and tell on myself. I'll tell my boss that all the time. I'm like, look, I'm gonna go ahead and tell on myself before she calls up here and tells on me. <laughs> with this lady, you're not yeah. cursing me. I don't let the kids curse. I'm not allowed to curse, so you can't curse at me. <laughs> I'll be back when you're calm. Mm. Mm-hmm. We Many- click more. I guess we just push. <laughs> Many moons ago, in the in the beginning of this podcast, me and Tedisco had a had a debate over that. I am of the, I'm not going to say anything until I have to say anything. Mm-hmm. Tedisco is of the, you need to get out in front of that. Important I'm going to go tell my principal yep. that some kid did this crazy thing in my class before. No, that, or that I did this crazy thing in my class. I did this my crazy lashes. Thing. Like, yeah, I messed up. I need to own it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I think my track record of of mm-hmm. having done at least I don't know one thing a month that would could would be um, uh, a headache for admin. Mm-hmm. Not a headache, but like maybe make them go, oh my. I can't believe you said that. That you know, it's like that's like. I, but I, I'm really good at walking that line. I learned this from being a child and really wanting to irritate my dad. So I was a child too. From, uh, yeah, and so my thing, I think I would do at the dinner table is, I would push my dad's buttons uh-huh. to the point where he wanted to hit me, right? <laughs> but. It wasn't quite far enough. Like I would like just like get him to that like where he would like you could see the vein just starting. It was like all the way popped, but it was starting to get there. And like maybe you do the game with your brothers where you're like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, and poke all around them, right? Yeah, it was it was uh, well things like you know I I can't even I don't can't even remember the examples, but but it would just kind of like 
push him a little bit. And then when I'd see he would get there, I would just kind of like back off and, and, and calm down so that I wouldn't get any consequences. And, and, I, and I kind of, I guess I developed the muscle memory for that, that I do that as a teacher where I say things that are like, oh, you couldn't like write me up or fire me. I mean, I didn't really do anything wrong, but like, you know, you know, um, I think I told you this, this before, like I was describing my handwriting on, on the board. You know, I'm like, oh, well, this, this hand, oh, so my handwriting is just because I'm just so fast and sloppy, like my ex-girlfriend. And then I just, and then I just <laughs> keep going. Really? And then I keep going. And you got to think about your audience. What's your grade level? What's your uh, 11. Grade? See, think about your audience. That, that works for me then. Right. You know, right. I teach middle school. That probably wouldn't fly. And like, and half the kids have, don't even get it. Know what's happening. It's not going to sleep in 11th grade. Are you kidding me? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what are you, what are you going to do? I, I didn't say any bad words. I didn't, you know, it came out of my mouth, like without even thinking about it. But a principal gets an email that says, Mr. Mealy said um, his ex-girlfriend was fast and sloppy. Like, what, <laughs> what are they calling the office? And what are they I, this, the I would, been. I would frame that right up. <laughs> <laughs> That's context. You need context is very important in that sense. That's yeah, I was talking about our cooking, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's all about context. Anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, unprofessionals. This here is another one of them there commercials. Okay. It's for our good friend, Alex Pimentel. Yeah, he used to be a math teacher. Now, he does taxes, okay? You want your taxes done by a math teacher. You want to make sure it's done right. Just like those other things you have math teachers do and you struggle with, have a math teacher do your taxes. Or if you are a math teacher and you just don't feel like doing it, you just send it on to him, all right? He's, his prices are reasonable, starting at $75. He can do all 50 states. I, I live in Arizona, but I work in Oklahoma, Okay, who are you, King Tut? But anyway, sorry, Steve Martin fans. Um, but <laughs> what? Well, it's an old reference. Going back to the seventies for some of you guys. You want to get your taxes done, but you don't feel like doing them, so you go to pimentelgarcia.com. The the connections in the um the show notes down there. You just go down to the show notes. You click on that. It takes you to the website. You connect with um Alex there. He does, his, he does your taxes for you, gets them done lickety split. All right? So that's what you need to do. So thank you guys. Thank you for supporting a teacher who is trying to go out and um, get a little business started. We appreciate you. And now, back to the wonderful show. Alrighty, so we want to get into because I know that autism has um, your heart and that, that you are that you're a huge ad- ad- advocate and you, you know. Um, the reason I have so a white beard. Why don't you just kind of like. <laughs> Um, share a little bit about that. And then also like one of the things we want to get into is what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you feel people and especially teachers, um, might have about autism? Well, um, you know, I have, um, I have three kids. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're not kids anymore. Good Lord. When did they, they got so much older and I'm exactly the same. It doesn't make any sense, but um, (laughs) they're 18, 17 and 14 now. Mm-hmm. Wow. And the two oldest were diagnosed with autism when they were young. Addison was like two and a half mm-hmm. and then McCade's 13 months behind her. So, I mean, he was basically born under a microscope. They were just waiting to, you know, diagnose him with it as well. Um, right. They were mostly nonverbal. The first, um, I think it was about seven or eight before McCade started talking. They told us he w- they're both awake now too. So nice. It's either going to be calm for a second or they're going to rumble in a minute. That's cool. Hey, she wants you to go clean up her table where her crayons yes, are. Yes. McKay, go clean some of it up. Yes, Dad. You see that? Like, oh, yeah, sure, Dad. Uh-huh. He's not moved. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, they, they, they were, they not were, they are um, pretty severe, um, but severe, but high functioning. Um, I, I know that sounds like a conundrum, but it, it is what it is. Like Addison, you know, has always been very mobile. Um, she, you know, speech for her has always been a problem. If she were to try to talk or were to start stimming, then you would notice she has autism. Um, Addison may, I tell people all the time, she may not be able to speak, but she can definitely tell you when she wants something. She can make her needs known. McCabe will initiate conversation sometimes now, but, you know, he can respond back and forth in conversations. Um, 
you know, it, it, it's been a challenge and it's still a challenge. It's just a different challenge. You know, um, it, it, I think the if I were to talk to teachers about, you know, kids with autism and misconceptions with people with autism, it would be the gen ed teachers and the special ed teachers for that matter. But you, you don't have to know everything about autism to have these kids in your room. You just have to try. Just mm-hmm. try. And it may work and it may not work. You know, we didn't know jack about autism when we had two kids with autism given to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and some days we have great days and it works. And some days we have terrible days and it doesn't work. The best teacher, they they have wonderful teachers now. But, you know, call someone the best. I feel bad. But the best teacher they've ever had, um, she didn't know jack about autism. She got a SPED certification. Along with, she was teaching fifth grade at the time, and she had a SPED certification, and I needed someone to teach an autism class. And she said, well, okay, I'll do it. But she made the greatest gains with them. She, I mean, she, all because she just tried. She had the best attitude with them. Um, Because of her, Addison, I got to hear Addison say my name for the first time. Like, she was 13. You know, dad, she could say dad, but she is Toby Price. Who's your dad? Toby Price. You know, I got to watch her. She learned to read. Or, you know, she, wow. she could read, she could write. And I tell folks, Addison didn't start writing until she was maybe 12 or 13. And now she doesn't stop. She'll sit at her table all day and write and draw. Like she's making up for lost time. That's we awesome. A ream of paper every four days. Like I'm out <laughs> right now and it's going to get scary if I can get to Walmart to get a ream of paper soon. And she'll, <laughs> she got to the point where she was only drawing on one side of the paper. Like she won't use the back. I'm like, come on, buddy. <laughs> there's, there's a whole back of that paper. Um, but, you know, I tell teachers, you don't have you don't have to know everything about autism. You just have to try. Yeah. And, and the teachers um, in the building where I where I was before, it took them it took them a while. But, you know, they just started trying, letting the kids letting the kids be in their rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up having we had third, fourth, fifth and sixth, four grades. But I had seven sped teachers in that one building before I left because we we were doing some different things. You know, we had an autism class. We had a behavior class. We had a self-contained class. I mean, yeah. You know, they were bringing kids in from other parts of the district and bringing them there just because we tried. We had mm-hmm. the best effort, I guess, is the best way to put it. And, you know, we try and we do that thing at the building where I'm at now, too. I mean, we, we just got to give them a chance. Mm-hmm. Does it always work? Nope. Does sometimes they're, you know, sometimes is it a complete and total mess? Yeah, it is. But you know, <laughs> think about it. Um, sometimes with typical kids, it's a complete and total mess. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. You know, I, it just is what it is. Yeah. When I've been working with, with students with autism. I find the most important thing isn't what I'm doing. It's just what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like you just got to take the time to like, listen and get to know them. Mm-hmm. And I've, how you respond to them is a big deal too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. I had a boy who uh, would love video games and some, and some days he would come in and like be, be just in like a video game mode and like just start singing theme songs to Sonic Mm. And saying he was Sonic and and all this stuff, I found if I went to him and I said, "Okay, pause the game," he could switch back to <laughs> getting back to work. Nice, nice, because that rule made sense to him. That's awesome. Yeah, that's and, cool. That's and he really also cool. that same child also had had issues with writing because when he'd write, he'd get super obsessed with how it looked and and how it worked and where all the commas were and and make sure there was no blemishes at all in his writing. So it would take him forever to write anything. Mm-hmm. But I found if I could sit down and read him the questions and have him verbally answer them, he'd give me perfect answers every time. Mm-hmm. So that's just how we got through packets. Nice. There we go. That's good stuff. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, and kids, you know, the more exposure general ed or typical kids have to kids with special needs, the better it is for all of them. And they get it a lot more than we give them credit for. I'll come to your ponytail in just a minute. Okay. okay I'm, coming. I'm coming. I know she's redhead. Even it's if she did not have autism, she would, she has every stereotypical redhead behavior in the world. <laughs> I, know, Target. I know. I know you want to go to Target. And she'll look at you like crayons. And like, I promise you, I think she's Jedi mind tricking me because I. <laughs> no, I'll go get the crayons today. I will. I'll go get them. I'll go get them. Anyway. And an icy. Okay. And an icy. Okay. But kids, kids get it more than we give them credit for. Yeah. I remember my wife will tell you she was subbing at the building where I was a long time ago and she had um McCade was outside at recess with them and he walked over and peed on an anthill on the playground. And my wife was just like, Oh my oh. God. you know, she was freaking out. She was upset and like four of the kids came up and said, Miss Price, 
I peed out here all the time. I mean, <laughs> if we don't want to go inside. I mean, I'm just like, see, and kids get it. To them, it was no big deal. She was embarrassed. Right. Kids were like, it's fine. I mean, I pee on, we pee out here all the time. Like, you're not supposed to, but. There you go. There you, you know, go. Kids get it a lot better than we think they do. Yeah. It's a lot better than we think they do. I, 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 do, I do appreciate that. I do think that that is good that kids learn how to deal with, like, you know, I, not putting people who are different in a corner and go, oh, we're not going to, you know, you know, have them. It will be. McKay, can you say hello? Hello. Hey, McKay. Hi. You don't know me, but I know you from the joke of the day. Mm-hmm. Okay, McKay. McKay, go get her glasses off the table. Oh, and speaking, so now uh, while I went there, so McCade is is your um, I guess he's the he can help. You're the, you're the straight man, and and he's and and he's he's the funny one on the joke of the day. I think that's the way it's turned out now. <laughs> um, you know, if you wait and like if I do the joke of the day and I haven't given him his medicine for the night at like seven o'clock, oh, you'll see, you can tell a difference. It's yeah. a lot more fun. He may not yeah. tell the right joke, <laughs> and he may not hit the punchline. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun, and we call that yeah. McCade unfiltered. Uh, so we're obviously goofballs, and one of the reasons why I got you on here and, and the joke of the day was definitely I love the joke of the day. So if you your Twitter handle will be in the show notes, uh, Toby and and McKay do the joke of the day, and they're I think pretty much ninety nine percent dad jokes, if not one hundred and ten percent dad oh, jokes. In a heartbeat. <laughs> um, so if you love dad jokes, and I, and I do, and I do love a good dad joke all day long. But talk about how Jennifer um, has played a part in your life, and in relation to both being an assistant principal being a dad of kids with autism, just all the aspects of your life and how humor has, um, like how you value humor. Oh my gosh. Um, y'all, if, if you're not, let me try and say something insightful, I guess. Um, <laughs> why? why? You don't have to do that. <laughs> and, you know, I tell teachers this, if you can't, if you can't come to work and have a little bit of fun and the kids don't see you having fun, right. why are they going to want to go and do that type of job? I mean, yeah. I don't want to. I mean, it's going to if you're bored all the time. And, and honestly, I, I can't be bored all the time. I, I just I, I like to laugh. Um, and a lot of the time I tell folks, we <laughs> they're like, did you watch The Good Doctor or Chicago Fire or this drama? This drama? No, I have enough drama <laughs> in my life. I need to laugh. I, <laughs> I guess it's it's an unhealthy coping mechanism, but I, I no. love it. I make I believe, the, it, I believe in sitcom therapy. Life. I call it sitcom therapy. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset and I will. Doctor. um. Binge, binge watch whatever sitcom I'm, um, I'm uh-huh. into at that time. And I, that comfort shows. My wife knows them. And God bless her for watching them with me. You know, Scrubs. Mm-hmm. Comfort mm-hmm. Show. She can tell if I'm really upset Scrubs is on or Community. I love Community. So weird. I love Community. I yes. love both those We're shows. We're big Community fans here. And I'm glad you, you said all that about, about humor because I think another misconception people have about kids with autism is that they don't have a sense of humor. And kids oh, with yeah, autism are so funny. Like, yes. they have such a good sense of humor. They really do. Um, like, one night, and this happens more often than not, but one night, their rooms are, you'll go down our hallway, Marley Kate has the first room, Addison has the next room, and McCade has the room after hers. They share walls. And you'll mm-hmm. hear, in the middle of the night, you'll hear, what's Addison's favorite animal? And you, Addison will go, a sheep. Oh. Addison, say bad, bad. And he'll <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm just like that's what he thinks is funny when he that to him that's his joke, you yes. know. <laughs> um, his teacher, the teacher he doesn't not the one he has right now, but the one he had last year. She was always trying. He he didn't really gel with her, and he liked to give time. And she was always doing these like career aptitude things with him, asking him what he wanted to be for a living. And she'd call us off serious and upset because McCade said he wants to be a pig when he grows up. <laughs> 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 And he would <laughs> tell a pig buttermilk biscuit. What he would tell her, and I'm just like, dude, that's not um, what you be when you grow up. But he tell, I mean, they they have a sense of humor. I know they, they do. do. They're fine, I got, I got this kid laughing in my um class about me five years ago. You know, he wasn't like severely autistic, but but it, but definitely, you know, on the spectrum was, was pretty obvious most of the time. Mm-hmm. And I go, is it true? You only have dimes and pennies and quarters he's like what i go well your name's nicholas (laughs) nicholas did he get it (laughs) he did he thought it was great (laughs) nice mckay now come up with some silly things that we think is funny like um mckay are bridges made out of gold no they're made out of steel 
All right. My favorite show is Family Guy. Yeah, we don't. We don't watch that show. No, no. Mom's <laughs> show is Family Guy. Yeah. It, no, it's not. <laughs> You're like, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Can we, can we get some crayons? We'll get some crayons today. Man, I want crayons now. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Crayola. <laughs> and Addison, he he likes Crayola. Addison likes rose, the rose art. And I'm like, oh, you like the rose? Oh, that's that's cheap crayons. They, they wish they were Crayola. Yeah. I try to tell yeah. her that, but we have buckets of crayons on the dining room table right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, the crayons are good. He, what happened is she got a new box of crayons um, before we got all iced in, and it was mm-hmm. 64 in the box. And nice. He dumped them out with the sharpener. Yeah, with the sharpener, and he dumped them out. That made her livid. Mm-hmm. So, random story. Okay. Uh, the first time I ever worked with a, a, a child with autism um, was I was a teenager. I was a camp counselor at the YMCA, and I was working at this performing arts camp. Under this uh, this woman named Tiana, she was running the whole camp. And so there's this boy, he's like, I don't know, 12, 13, um, high functioning, sweet kid. And uh, <laughs> I'll never forget one day uh, my boss, Tiana, she goes up to him. She goes, hey, you know, uh, George, you're, you're getting a little bit older now. You're starting to look a little bit more like a man. He's like, oh, yeah. She's like, yeah, you know, you're starting to grow out that mustache a little bit. And he looked at her and went, thanks, Tiana. I see you're growing one, too. No. There you go. Good job. Good job. Brutally okay. honest. Yes. Oh yeah. Brutally <laughs> honest. Yeah. My parents will walk in, um, and they'll say, "My son will see them, and he'll walk up and he goes, hmm, and they'll look at my mom's face. Yeah, old. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. What you gonna yeah. do? Yeah, oh. true. He gets it, you know, and he's not being ugly. It's just like, yeah. oh, it's just an observation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. This completely unrelated, weird. My grandmother was at one point really large and then really slimmed down. And, you know, I remember what was entertaining for me as a five year old is she would hold her arm up yeah. and I would just play with the flap and just just bat the flap underneath her arm. <laughs> I mean, it was like this big thing of skin, you know, it was just because, you know, she'd gone for mile and like 250 pounds to like 120 or something like that. So that was, that I'm pretty sure that made its way into a Rocky montage, right? Yeah. yeah oh, definitely. Yeah, I was training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good times. Oh, man. Well, I'll yeah. tell you one of my, it was not my favorite story when it happened, but I'll tell you all the cave story before we go. Um, we have new neighbors that live that way on our house. Um. And yeah. everyone's like, oh, that way. We know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> See, now you can go and visit them and ask them if it's true. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, they came to the door and I hadn't met them yet. And the lady came to the door and she said, um, I just want to let you know that your son was in our house. And <laughs> he came in dressed up as Batman <laughs> and he opened the screen door and asked for a Coke. And I went to go give him one. And I did give him one, and he looked at me and looked back at the refrigerator and walked over and grabbed two more and put them in his bag and laughed and then ran back over the fence. <laughs> I said, oh, he had a Batman mask on. He had on a Batman t-shirt. He had a black bag, and I go back in his room. There's the Batman mask and all that stuff's on the ground, and there he is sitting in the bed with uh, three cans of Coke. And I'm like, dude, first of all, that's not okay to go in somebody's house. Second of all, you know, Batman would never steal Coca Cola. That's not what he does. Right. And I looked at my wife and I was like, honey, do you buy them a, is that like something you buy a card for, a gift card, a bottle of wine to apologize for? Yes. That's Sorry, my son came in your house yeah. as Batman and stole yes. Coca Cola. Yes. I would read that Miss Manners article. <laughs> yes. Well, what, what obviously, he needs to be on the neighborhood um, welcome wagon committee. Oh. It sounds like I would yeah, definitely. He could no, be. Batman needs to be on the neighborhood watch. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't even try. It's like, yeah, sure. You sure is my kid? No, I. I, I right. Yeah. I know. It sounds like it's within the realm of logic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, totally that's... Totally <laughs> that's why we go and get an IC each day because if we don't, he'll go and get one from oh. somewhere on his own. Wow. Yeah. There, there's no boring days in your house. Uh uh-uh. uh. There's not. <laughs> There's just not. It doesn't happen. Oh, okay. Well, you've already told us. Too long, we all get to, like we go up and count heads. It's too quiet for too long. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've already told us some funny um, McCabe stories. Um, but we always like to hear funny stories from like when you were a teacher, when you're a principal, something happened, you know, whatever. So so hit us with some some um, some good stories. And then we're going to um, play the game. I don't know if you've listened and, and listened to any of our episodes where we play the game, but you're going to love the game when we get to it. Okay? Oh, yeah, I'm all make sure that we've got time for the game. Okay, well, funny, funny kid story. And this wasn't me. I'm so glad I didn't do this. I was assistant principal in the building. Um, this was before I became principal and the head principal. God bless him. He did this. Uh, he got a write up yeah. and um, he brought he brought the kid up and um, he talked to the boy and he fussed at the boy and he sent him back to class. And then he asked the secretary, give me some emergency card so I can call his daddy. Well, she did. And he called his daddy and his daddy was a police officer. Oh, boy. Daddy was like, he did what? Yeah. I'm going to come up. Yeah. You call him back up to the office and I'm going to come up there and I'm going to tear him up. There was no reason for him to do that. Y'all, I'm so sorry. Well, he comes up and they call up the boy that he just fussed at, Tyler Smith, right? Mm -hmm. The problem was two Tyler Smith. Smiths. Oh, he no. He called the wrong daddy. The oh. wrong daddy came up there to fuss at his kid, but it was not his kid once he oh, got there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh so he, good. He called, he called the wrong dad and the wrong dad oh. came up there ready to just tear his son up. Oh, the wrong dad was, was like, like, cop. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Good times. You never that, know. That was hilarious. <laughs> yes. I, I did write up the wrong kid when I was student teaching and I felt yeah. really bad. I had this class where it was like, there were like eight boys and they were always messing around. And there was one sweet, quiet boy who just sat in the corner and I accidentally wrote him up because I didn't remember all of their names. <laughs> oh, that poor kid. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, it happens. It happens. It happens. Oh, and, and you know what I did, Mealy, when that happened? What you what what you did? I went to the principal and told him I made the mistake. Did you? Good for you. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's that. Uh, my yeah, favorite. I mean, that's. I guess you do that. You know what I mean? Well, I you, have, you go get the write up and you tear it up or whatever. I don't know. Well, no, I I found that out because I saw him sitting in detention. <laughs> like he already got the consequences. Oh, nice. <laughs> Poor but kid along with it too. You know? I know. So, well, the principal asked him. He admitted he was talking in class. I'm like, all right, maybe I just missed it. I don't know. I felt really bad. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite student story that I remember. I was teaching fourth grade, and it was. Um, I'm pretty sure it was state testing time, and I couldn't answer his question anyways. But he raised his hand. He said, uh, "Miss Price, how many uh, inches are in a pound?" <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm not bringing any rules when I say I have no idea. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I'm not quite buddy. sure. <laughs> I'd done my job well, by the way. Yes. <laughs> How many yes. are in a pound? I have no idea. Dude. <laughs> the, the, the correct response is do you mean a British pound or. Um... <laughs> I think no you way. mean a stone. <laughs> <laughs> Best job in the world. Yeah, I'm going to put that on my next test. Um, <laughs> you need to put that when you're converting measurements. That would be a good a, a good question to put on the test and see, see, what, see how many kids um, like, and what the answers you get. <laughs> That's what Siri and Alexa are for. Convert that for me. How many cups mm -hmm. are in a whatever? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Wait, why are we making a podcast again? Because we like to watch movies and yell about them. They yell about directors, yell about the plot, yell about the acting, but they also talk a lot. But mostly Josh and Cassie, yeah, about the movies. Hey, everybody. I'm Cassie. And I'm Josh. And we are the hosts of the brand new podcast, Josh and Cassie Yell About Movies. Each week, we're breaking down a different film and sharing our unique perspectives and holding nothing back. And fair warning, this is a spoiler-heavy podcast, so yeah, just be aware of that, please. Do we make jokes? Or is there anything else? Gosh, I hope so. I have fun laughing at you. Well, thanks. And we yell about movies, is that right? <laughs> That's right. We upload new episodes on Tuesdays, so hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. So we're going to play our game now. Okay, and so for those of you that are tuning in for the first time or whatever, there's a, a game that many of people have played a long time ago called Kill, Marry, and then a, a naughty word. Oh, yeah. um, but this is a version of that. But instead, it is student, colleague, admin. So we give you three people, and you have to decide, would you rather have them, as, as if you were a teacher, would you rather them be your student or your colleague or your admin, and you have to, you have to put these that. three people. 
Okay. So the three you've got is Obi Wan, Yoda, and Darth Vader. Ooh. Um. Okay. Teacher, definitely Yoda because I love Yoda. Okay. Admin would be Obi Wan because he's got that calm, cool presence. Mm -hmm. Student would be Darth Vader. Okay. Only because, much like my own kids, I tell folks all the time, there, I, there's still some good in him. Okay. <laughs> and I can bring that out. I can bring that out. Awesome. Yoda awesome. would definitely be my teacher, though. He's the one. He's got it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Let's, I got another um, Han, Lando, and Chewie. Oh, man. Um, I would want, oh, man. <laughs> I would want Chewie to be the admin because he seems like he's got the only calm head on his shoulders. <laughs> I would want Lando. And when, when he comes in, when he needs to get the the, the auditorium quiet for oh, assembly, yeah. and like they yeah, all be quiet. Yeah, I don't it. know because when he loses in chess, he does rip people's arms off. He does. Well, you know, Master but that's negotiator. Master yeah. negotiator. I think Lando would be my. I would want Lando to be my colleague, but Donald Glover's Lando because he's a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Yes. Getting a beer with Han. him on a Friday after a busy yeah. week. That would be awesome. Yes. It would be great. Yeah. And Han, I just love Han. Han would be in my class. I'd be okay with Han being yeah. in my class. You know, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've had him at some point and you know, I idolize him to another point. So it'd be it'd be great. Yeah. I'd be worried about the title line offenses. Original Lando though is gonna like um you know, start talking to you about that thing that you're not telling the principal to disco. And then all of a sudden you're going to like the principal's coming out from behind the uh -huh. closet go door. Him. You're like, what did you do? I'm sorry. He was here already. I had like, no choice. <laughs> yeah, Lando with those adult responsibilities, man. He sold out when he had to. Curse you, Billy D. Williams. I respect it. You know. <laughs> okay, we'll do we'll do one more. I've got two more ready, but we'll do at least one more. This is goofy, but R2D2, C3PO, and K2SO. Oh wait, wait! Which one's K two S O from from um from Rogue One? From yes. Rogue One, yeah. yeah. Rogue One. Oh, okay. Yeah, K two would be my. I think K two would be my my admin. Okay, if you don't, <laughs> K2 would be my admin. C three PO bag as your admin. Yeah, and C three PO would be my colleague, but he'd be that person that would ask the like the the, the questions at the end of the staff meeting that nobody. He, would he for meeting. sure would. The kids yes. would eat him alive. <laughs> he'd right. have gum stuck to the back uh -huh. of his head. <laughs> he, would. he would totally would. And then there's R two. R two would just be fun to have in class. He'd be that one kid that actually gets it. Yes. You know, you'd be like, yes. hey, where, where's my coffee? And it would just like pop up out of his head. <laughs> yeah, but I think he'd also be pranking the other kids, though. If there's a kid who annoyed him, he'd like light him on fire, like his pants on fire on the bus. Yes. That would be awesome. He would also be <laughs> hacking into the computer system and changing his grades. Changing his uh, grades like Ferris Bueller. He's only been absent yes. nine He's setting times. off fire Wait. alarms when he felt yes. like it. We can't <laughs> prove he set off the fire alarm, but he plugged into the wall and it went off. So. Mm -hmm. I remember my wife was in the car rider line at the kids' school when they were little and in the car rider line, and she heard alarms going off, and there was a fire alarm. She's like, are they doing a fire drill 10 minutes before dismissal? They weren't, but McCabe was. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> McCabe pulled it. They did a fire drill. <sighs> and God bless that principal. the best principal in the world. She's like, y'all, he didn't mean to, and he didn't know. And she said, and honestly, we needed to do a drill. We ain't done one in weeks. So it's <laughs> <fine. laughs> yeah, box. Like yeah, you're like, yes, I don't want to have to go to court and defend uh, him um, for... Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I definitely know some admin that would not have made that choice. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> then the first time I had it happen, I'm like, yeah, he didn't mean to do it, so it'll be fine. When somebody did it in my building, I'm like, it's fine. We're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, one more <laughs> round. All right, okay. let's do it. I'm ready. The Emperor, Kylo Ren, and Jabba the Hutt. Ooh. ooh. I don't know how I put those three together, but I did. Ugh. I think Jabba would be the superintendent. Is that okay? <laughs> Jabba's the admin. Okay. Uh huh. The emperor. The emperor would be the admin. Um, I would be okay with Kylo being. Kylo would be a student in your class. Okay. Because I, I got some anger issues. Kylo and Ben. You know, those are different people. So Kylo yes. would be the student in the class. You know, he. Okay. He's that goth guy who knows the right answer. Like, when am I going to need to use this? <laughs> <laughs> You should do it this way. It's faster. Uh, destroy a desk. So that means the emperor is your colleague? 
I guess the emperor would be a colleague. Yeah. 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 I mean, don't hang out with him that much, this, but yeah, he's been doing this way too long and you know, <laughs> he could just go ahead and retire because yeah. we yeah. all get it. We, we get your gimmick, you know, yeah. um, join fantasy football. <laughs> Search your feelings. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. No worries. Do you have a joke I for the day? A, uh, a joke for the day. Oh my gosh, I knew y'all would ask for a joke. I should have known y'all would ask for a joke. I always try to think of the ones that like my wife won't let me say. She's like, you two are not reading that joke. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have some videos that I made a long time ago with a zombie with like with Grog the zombie on them, and there were uh-huh. zombie jokes and like um and I always made I made fart jokes and cannibal jokes with all, with Grog and there was one the other day and I was like honey can we do this one she, no you are not letting my son read that like nice. I showed up late to the cannibal buffet and I, they all gave us a cold shoulder nice <laughs> that's not okay. You teach people, four and five year olds they may see that I'm just like oh. oh. That's good. But you know what? If she didn't do that, sometimes every now and then I probably would have been fired a long time ago. Yeah, there you go. That's that's it's always good to to um to, to run it by the wife. Yes. Rule number yeah. one. She Don't get fired. Friend. That's our that's our rule number one as well. Yeah. She's awesome. Well, we appreciate having you on. Those of you who follow Thank him you. on Twitter, you have any you don't have any other like book or um blog or anything that you're if you're selling or promoting. Uh, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. The, book, the book's not the book's not done yet, but the book will okay. be done. Okay. About you used to live with us. It's it's a pretty interesting story. I'll tell you about. Yeah, it. yeah. Have, um, That's to awesome. Sandwiches from schools. He lives in the house every now and then. It's it's different. Okay. <laughs> well, let us know when it's coming out, and we'll do all, all we can to um promote it and and follow him because then you'll know when it's coming out because I'm sure he'll be he'll be um sharing it on on the Twitter. I'm all about a cheap pop. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So thank. <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much. And as we always say, stay unprofessional. Oh man, it was great, y'all. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you so much. It was That's fun. fun. That was a good time. That was a good time. Thank, Thank you so much for listening. Your exit ticket this week. Which Star Wars character are you like in the classroom? Let us know in the comments or hit us up on Twitter at Unprocast. We'll see you next week. Stay professional.